I know a lot of my viewers have been waiting for this. Lincoln and Rockfish opening, 2024. The stars aligned, and a group of us were blessed with some epic conditions off the west coast. You guys know me, spearfishing is secondary. But I'm not gonna lie, it felt good to bust out the old spear gun. Yeah, it's always that battle, like, you know, it's gonna be a really fun day, but when it's rainy and it's cold, there's much more comfortable places to hang out than putting on a wetsuit and jumping into the Pacific. But it's all worth the effort, and we never regret one of these trips. We just made the uh, two hour drive out to the West Coast, and the spearfishing season opened for lane cod and rockfish about six days ago. I'm gonna try my luck at uh, bringing home some protein because my fish supply just ran out. Jasmine cooked up the last of the fish last night. So I'm gonna target some uh, ling, if I see one, a rockfish. I'm gonna be here for two days so I can get my possession limit of six. And I might tag a couple uh, greenling as well. I want some ceviche. All my fish is gone. Five valves are closed. Might look for an octo. Uh, I wanna see a wolf eel. Obviously not harvest, but I uh, just want to film one. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be a fun day. We've got a good group. We got, uh, I think, three people per boat. We got two boats. Hotel tonight. Awesome. Let's see here. It's the law. Keep your distance from whales. It's illegal to approach marine mammals with a drone. It's illegal to feed the sea lions. You could be fined 500, held liable for damages or face criminal charges. Administrator controls signage. You better adhere to it because DFO is around the corner here. I always see them creeping around in the boats. Make sure you're harvesting responsibly, staying within your limits. You're not harvesting bivalves that are closed, which includes rock scallops. Because I don't see them open in this area very often. Don't want to get in trouble. Nice ride, brother. Thank you for us. You're yeah, dude. Uh, you're ready to go, man. How's yeah. it going? Good. Long time no see. Good. Yeah. What's up, Cal? Same idea. Long time, man. How you been? Good. Life's good. Life's good. And the rain has started. It's not gonna be a glorious day out there. We're in the ocean and it's not a big deal. I just can't use my big camera to film around. I don't wanna risk getting it damaged. That's only downside, I just can't capture as much content. So if uh, Joseph, you ready for this one, man? Shooting, uh, shooting some fish today or what? Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. no, probably, man. <laughs> Definitely, we're gonna wear gear. A lot of people ask me what gun I would recommend. Honestly, I only have experience with like four or five. So maybe I'm not the best person to ask, but the sniper, Patho 75 has worked great for me. It's durable as hell. I uh, use and abuse it, shoot it straight into rocks, haven't bent or destroyed a shaft. I got the original rubber since 2020, so going on four years now. I don't expect it to last very much longer, and I don't have any backup, so fingers crossed it doesn't break. But it's a really good gun. I uh, leave it full of water sometimes. I have to by default when I'm gone for a week. It hasn't corroded as I was uh, getting ready, packing up my vehicle. I just realized I forgot my dive torch, which sucks, because I film half the time I'm here. And if the water's murky, trying to get some footage without a torch, it's gonna be quite difficult. I actually forgot my torch, uh, was it last time or maybe the one before that? And then I forgot my snorkel before that. I don't know what's going on. I was doing so good. I never forget anything. Phone still says planning route. We'll get there. Yeah. We're on route, the conditions are clearing up. It's uh, sunny out. Well, getting there. It's not, not trenching. Boring. Yeah, it's not pouring <laughs> like it was at least uh, 15, 20 minutes ago. Uh, it's looking pretty calm right now, but I think we're seeing, what is it, 1.8 meter swell? So swell might be up there a bit when we're two. out in the elements, but what's that? It's a two, two meter, swell, yeah, yeah, two meter swell. That's pretty uh, pretty hefty. We'll find some protection. We got the full cami. <laughs> it's really not too bad here. It's like, well, like 14, 15 meters right now? Yeah, it's not bad. Figured we'd try our luck and catch some crab. We got some prawn traps too, but setting prawn traps is a lot of effort, so we'll just look for some dungies or red rock, whatever crawls in there. We just met up with the guys. Uh, they're hitting a spot up right now. We got uh, two boats, six people. We're gonna destroy and conquer and check out a different spot. They're probably gonna meet up with us here shortly too. Weather's looking good, visibility report's good. Things are shaping up to be fun. Hopefully this anchor holds. Yeah, dude, no, no, it won't be good. I think it's a little protected here too, which is nice. Why aren't you in the water yet, man? Huh? Why aren't you in the water yet? <laughs> like slow poke. Why aren't you in there, man? We're getting in. We're jumping in now. We just anchored. We're out of the spot. Visibility is looking good. According to the anchor line, I can see it going down. I think we're uh, in for a tree, but I don't want to get my hopes up, so let's uh, pretend we're not. You're a tree. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> Thanks. Ah, uh, the excitement of the unknown. You can't beat it. The visibility was great. Or it might have just felt that way after all the miso soup I was diving in on the east coast. We searched around for about 30 minutes or so, but overall, the place was pretty barren. 
We spotted some juvenile lingcod and smaller rockfish, but it didn't take us long before moving along. To be honest, I could have spent all day searching. It felt amazing to be diving off this coast again, but moving along was 100% the right call. There we go. Stoned. Sometimes the hardest part of spearfishing is deciding which fish to bring home. Not a bad problem to have. Turns out the one I was looking for was right under my nose. Black rockfish are extremely easy to shoot. Thankfully, getting the money shot is a breeze. Sometimes they make it too easy. Not as easy as the grocery store though. And diving out in these elements can't be sold short. Greenling are actually much harder to hunt. They're pretty skittish and a smaller target. They're also pretty smart. I see them everywhere until I start to actively hunt them. It happens too often to be a coincidence. I get the feeling they can sense the body language. Sometimes your best option is to just post up and wait patiently. Fish seem to pop up out of thin air, or salt water I should say. See what I mean? I must say that was some of the best diving I've had in a while. Hitting that uh, little pinnacle, that was gorgeous. All baby kelp, all growing seen a lot of fish, a lot of big old rockfish. I got my three, shot three greenling for ceviche, and I got a link up. Clayton shot a big one, good for him. Nice, uh, nice monster to bring back, probably 80 some odd centimeters. It's just really, really nice diving. Nice to see all the life out there. And the visibility was good. I give it like, I don't know, six or even a six and a half. So I'm happy with that. The guys, they were getting hungry. Uh, the one boat, I hopped in with uh, Clayton. They're going to get some food. And we're just gonna chill out here on the beach for a bit, kind of recharge and maybe dive again. We're diving tomorrow, so we don't want to exhaust ourselves today, but just fun being here on this remote little piece of land, searching the shore for sea glass and other things to bring home for decor. You know how I roll? Yeah, it was here years ago and I remember finding some good stuff. I think this is the bottom of a Japanese fish float. It's a nice uh, turquoise piece. There you go. Another one. Nice uh, blue chunk there. Yeah, finding some good stuff. Are we going to get you some fish, right? That's the plan? Oh, don't, don't single me out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I shot my fish. <laughs> you guys don't know, uh, Clayton had his motor stolen last year. And he got it back. I was raided a house full of stolen goods. That's so awesome, it's so lucky. That never happens. <laughs> no, <laughs> very rare for that to happen. <laughs> it's getting rough out. Yeah. This looks like a nice spot though. Very pic picturesque. I always have the uh, Jurassic Park theme song going through my head when I, when I come to these areas. <laughs> right, right? Yeah. <laughs> Woo. So I think we're diving in one last spot. They're gonna look around for a few more fish. And then from there, dive an old dock. And then from there, get some food, check into our hotel for the night, and do it again tomorrow. Sarah took the responsible route at the last spot and left her gun on the boat. It was pretty crowded, and for both safety and sustainability, she took one for the team. Kudos. Clayton found a ling, but by the time the gun was loaded, it swam off. We searched around, but the spot was pretty fishless. It was, however, drop dead gorgeous. I took advantage of the amazing scenery and explored around. found a swim through by chance and safely ventured my way through. Nothing brings the child out in me more than an underwater jungle gym. 
Last but not least, we do have that pier. We didn't find anything older than the 1950s, but at least I don't have to wonder what's below anymore. Sometimes, that's worth its weight in gold too. Kind of forget where I left off. Somewhere off the coast, I think. We just got to our accommodations, the Canadian Princess Lodge and Marina. It's a really nice spot. And they uh, hooked us up, so thanks guys. We got our uh, room a bit of a discount. It's a really conveniently located spot. And our accommodations, straight up, like some of the best that I've had in Eucalypt in this area. They're, they're gorgeous, they got everything we need. What do you think? It's nice, eh? That's pretty good. Yeah. There we go. So we uh, both have a queen size bed, nice deck, deck space. We got some of our equipment out there uh, drying right now. Beautiful view of the marina. By the way, we have our boat here, right over there somewhere, hanging out. Got a little TV, not like we're gonna be watching any TV. We've had a coffee already. You wanna watch some TV? Yeah, screw diving tomorrow. Let's just, uh, yeah, I'll just sit here and <laughs> I'll sit here and watch Netflix. The most important is bathroom. Nice big bathroom. I had like a 15 minute shower after the cold diving. That was the best shower I've had in a long time. If you're in the area, the Canadian Princess Hotel and Lodge. Perfect for a little spearfishing getaway. We got a mission, we're gonna go pull up some crab traps. This is a sick little boat he has here. It's like solid fiberglass. Nice 70 horsepower on the back. Who makes this boat? Is this a Boston whaler? Fiber Pro. Fiber Pro. Yeah, makes sense. a great story with us. You're really the guy who made this boat died from like Fiberglass in the lake oh yeah oceans. that makes sense man yeah, that makes sense so he's very committed to his craft yeah not uh not an ounce of wood in the boat it's just all and not fiber. a not an ounce of respirators all right p i teach occupational yeah, health and safety I appreciate the, the effort he put in. yeah yeah no dope almost ran through the crab traps and the <laughs> captain forgot the bait <laughs> Good job, man. <laughs> oh, it's nice, right? We got good bait. It's true, it's true, it's true. We got good bait this time, though. A bunch of uh, fish scraps. Making uh, good use out of it. Female red rock. Oh, no, it's a male. Oh, monster. Yeah. Holy. Oh, didn't even fit in the trap. No crab in the first trap. But, uh, we baited it. We dropped it again. Fingers crossed tomorrow morning we got something. Oh yeah, we got <laughs> monster! <laughs> we got a dungy at least. Or is that a graceful? No, that's a dungeon. Yeah, that's, that's a dungy. It just needs to be five inches bigger. Crap, Third time's crap. the charm. This video's gonna have a great voiceover. Third time's the charm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some of these conversations go a bit south. <laughs> Luckily, we're not recording at all times. Damn, damn. It's the, uh, the, the journey here that counts. That stupid wound I get while well, skateboarding is proving to be annoying. When I dive, the fin just like rubs right against it and peels the scab off. Hopefully this band-aid does the trick. It's 7.30 a.m. Everybody's awake. We've been up for about a half hour, so the line for seven. Grab some coffees and uh, we're gonna get an earlier start. The wind's gonna pick up quite a bit at one o'clock. So if we're over for eight, gives us four hours on the water, probably a solid two or three of diving. And then uh, driving back to Nanaimo, I got my limit of greenling and rockfish yesterday. Got that one ling cod. Probably gonna try to shoot a few rockfish today, maybe a couple more greenling. If I see a ling, if we go to a new spot, that's a possibility. I don't have any fish in the freezer and I don't think I'll be out here again for a while. It sucks my uh, co-worker. I was doing that nine day on, five day off shift. He uh, just gave us two weeks notice. So this is my last stretch of nine days off for a while. I'll be back to the Monday to Friday grind, going back to the mainland from the island which is really sad because I love spending the time with the family. The company I work for right now is a bit slow, so uh, might as well make the money while I can. Maybe some changes coming in the future. Hopefully all positive. Sucks that right around summer and spring. It's like I gotta go back to that grind, but that was a good run. I've been doing that for almost a year now. I'm gonna throw my gear on in the nice warm uh, establishment here and hit the water. As far as your time, we're all geared up. We're I think 10, 15 minutes behind schedule, so not bad at all. Yeah. Considering we got six people in our crew. We're gonna go pull some crab traps up and then explore some new coasts that we haven't been to before, which is always exciting and fun and could be really rewarding. And if not, we still got a good haul from yesterday, so not walking back empty handed. I got this contraption. If I'm filming spearfishing, I got my camera in this direction. But then I can also 180 it, and then boom, now it becomes a selfie stick. Yeah, dude, it's awesome. 
and then that way I don't have to unscrew the GoPro, risk dropping it, and also risk losing footage. If I see a wolf eel like quickly, I can boom. Now I'm in National Geographic mode. Now I'm in what's that? What's that guy that spearfishes? That meat eater dude. What's his name again? Ronaldo or something? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nelly Furtado. <laughs> Nelly, this is Nelly Furtado mode. And there we go. Well, a tiny little red rock fell out. Oh! They got the cheeks! Oh, no, you got the cheeks. All red rocks. Look it. This one's good too. Here you go. Another red rock. Last trap has been pulled. We got a female dungy. Oh, that guy's here. Yeah, look at that. Maybe borderline. I'd like to see that too. One more. Uh, yeah, it's good to see at least one dungy in this She's been around pot. for a while with a Yeah, yeah, yeah big, big barnacle, yeah. Female too. Oh, yeah, yeah, female. That get big enough? It's a male. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Red so top. we got one keeper. Nice work. Over the two days, I think we pulled in eight or so keeper size red rock. Not a honey hole, but overall, still worth the effort. Day two was much calmer, but the current was still ripping. Oh, by the way, the day prior, the current was ripping. The visibility had improved marginally, and things were shaping up nicely. We anchored in a precarious situation. We dove the anchor to ensure everything was safe and sound before getting too comfortable. Big shout out to Chris and Clayton for bringing the boats. They definitely made the trip. From the first drop, I was seeing some fat rockfish. Two in the bag. Chris was chatting with a commercial fisherman the day prior who said they had a great day out on the water. 12,500 pounds of link out on the boat on a day's outing. Makes me feel less guilty about taking a couple home on a two day outing. I dream about days like this. I was feeling like a million dollars. I got my, uh, my rockfish, my, uh, my ink cod, so I'm happy. Time to pull around for a bit. I started trying to rockfish when I was down there. I'm gonna go try to see if I can find it, get a couple of shots. Apparently, there's a bunch of cabos out here. If I move slowly, I might be able to find one. I'm uh, having a good time. By the way, if you're on a boat, be careful of this stuff. Uh, yeah. Not the hard way, I don't know if you can see that, but... The nice, uh, rip, rip on my wetsuit. It should be repairable, but still not a good thing. I love it when I can put my gun away. Sourcing some protein was my priority, but filming this gem was high on the list. Amazing. I found that China rockfish, too. Clayton was trying to catch a fish with a jig he found. What kind of firm would I be if I didn't try to mess with him? <laughs> oh, sorry. We're gonna cruise to our next spot now. I've got my three rockfish and a link cod. I'm done spear fishing. I'm uh, gonna film around. I'm all for that. What do you wanna do? You wanna go cave exploring? Beach out ahead up, find it okay, yeah, so we're gonna go look for some caves, explore the shore. Whoa, well, maybe uh, snorkel. Right, there. Right, there. right where you guys are diving, right dude. Was it a gray? Yeah, dude, right there. Whoa, yeah, check this out. Whale right over there. I literally just got out of the water. If I jump back in now, that would be illegal. But these guys are in the water, they're right over there. I might even swim by them. Who knows? He probably uh, went down quite deep now. I get my camera out, that's the way it goes, right? They disappear as soon as the camera comes out. I think free diving is a skill every boater should have. If your anchor ever gets stuck, you can dive down and retrieve it. The key is anchoring in shallower water, not in like 60, 80 feet. If you can get away with 20 feet, a lot of bottom time to unjam your equipment. That's the way to do it. It's a plan, Captain. Yeah, I'm following that. <laughs> <laughs> I do what I'm told. Next spot we're here, I think we're just gonna explore the shore for a bit, take a rest. We should have uh, brought a lunch, that would have been nice. Actually, I, Clayton just saw a dungeon in the water, so maybe that's what we'll do instead of resting. Go look for a dungeon S. Jasmine will appreciate that. Hey, we can see bottom here. 
This might be a fun spot. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. This would be a fun spot to snorkel. Let's see if we can grab that dungee off the bottom. It looks like that's what uh, everybody's done. Yeah. Went from a beach exploration to a crabbing. While I'm at it, another thing to avoid is jumping off a boat with carbon fins. The force can put a lot of strain on them and cause them to snap. If you look closely, I do this here in a way to cause as minimal force as possible. Every time I come to this coast, I'm searching for deep offshore pinnacles. It was refreshing to look around at a different type of ecosystem for once. I must say, this is some of the best snorkeling I've done off our coast. I must have left with six minutes of footage. Don't worry, I trimmed it down to the best minute and a half. Trust me, that was not an easy task. By the way, feel free to throw this video a thumbs up if you're enjoying it so far. Helps me know it's all worth the effort. I wish I could just point at a marine creature and identify it on a whim. But with the diversity off our coast, that'd be no easy feat. My brain can only absorb so much at once. Once I learn to identify a creature, the ones I could ID last season go dark. Props to all the marine biologists out there. It took a while, but I eventually got cold. What a blast we had. It's a good catch. Those three, how about that? Yeah, I'm good with that. Thanks, brother. Your ling is on top of here. <laughs> that's a good one. Whoa. Yeah, that's a nice ling. Back to day. Yeah. All right, well, we'll see you guys later, and uh, thanks for the trip. Safe travels, guys. You man. Too. Good luck getting the fish. We're uh, pulling our crab chops. We got another one, another crab. But the seal, man, he wants that fish, man. I swear, man, they, they will rip that right out of your hands. They're pretty smart. That's pretty cool. That is really cool. Yeah. Like, like an arm's length away from them. Yeah, dude. Dude, that was awesome. That was so much fun. Yeah, man, thanks Yeah, so yeah, it's really good to see you again. That's a wrap. We're done here. Can make the uh, two and a half hour drive back once we hit up coffees, all that jazz. I got fish for a while now. Pretty pumped to have a full freezer. When I say full freezer, I mean the bottom 10% of it. Enough to last me for at least a month, maybe a month and a half. I've been eating a lot of fish lately. Jasmine will be excited too. Gonna have some good recipes. What's up, buddy? Hi. How you doing? Hi. Have a hug. Oh, buddy. I love you. Yeah, they do have it. Do you want to flay these for me, bud? I got little eyes. No, oh, you got big eyes too. Yeah. All these fishies. Look at this one here. 60, oh, well, 69. Yeah? What? Hey, you can have it. That's a zipper. Zipper? Yeah, it's for this. My broken Yeti. My broken knockoff Yeti. Santa! Stop, you did it other night. Yeah, you did. No, you saw me the other morning. Yeah. That was uh, yesterday morning. How you doing, baby? Go cool look. Go check it out. <laughs> that was jitsy. Those are fishies. The rewards of diving. Was it worth me being gone and you with the kids for two days? Yeah, it was worth it. Was it? Yeah. I got mine right there. Fish bowls to start it off. Thanks for watching, everybody. That was a fun trip. Thanks, guys, for joining. Guys, thanks, guys, yeah. for being with me for seven days because I was on the mainland for a few working. But I'm gonna mow down because I haven't eaten at all really today. No snacks. Peace and love.